you open your mouth and say, I will never be poor. And I can only be rich for God. You know, we also have a class of people who think that every, every, rich, every person who talks about money is unrighteous and they don't care about souls. Do you know how much we're spending for souls? Many of you don't have a clue. Are you hearing me? But you see, the Christian, the Christian has been so the best because of false doctrine. And me, this is my mandate. Every man has their own. Do what God called you to do. But I am doing exactly what God called me to do, to liberate men here. Somebody say, I'm free. Say, I am free. Yes, I am free. When I think about my health, I feel I am free. I know I am free. It doesn't matter what is in my body. It has no consequence. The prince of this world has nothing in me. His word works. I believe it. As the rain comes down and brings forth fruit through the seeds that are planted. I'm planting the seed of the word every day. And his truth is watering. It's watering. It's watering. He giveth seed to the sower, the Bible says, and bread to the eater. In the New Testament, he says, now let he that giveth seed to the sower and bread to the eater multiply your fruit or increase the fruits of your righteousness. Have you realized that when Paul looked at this God, he saw the mind of God from giving seed to the sower, to the place of sowing it because it is given <laughs> and bread to the eater. He, he's saying you must see that I've given you before you learn to give. You can never be a giver unless you have a vision of how much I've given you. There are not many Christians live in that realm. Many Christians live in the realm of the physical, what they have in their pocket, what they have planned and budgeted for. But you know, this money is for this. Let me tell you, Budgets work for some Christians, and I recommend them. But budgets don't work for certain Christians. And it might not sound wise, especially when your thoughts are far. Are you hearing me? But God does not budget. He just says, let there be. And there is. Because he's, 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 he's creating from the infinite. He's creating from the immeasurable. He can't run out. Can God run out of, 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 of dust? Can he run out of... He can't run out. He's, he's creating from exceedingly abundantly above that which you can think or even ask. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, I'm not against budgets. I'm only saying this for some people. And if you're a budgeting person, budget. Because if you go out of that budget, you'll be in trouble. Are you hearing me? But the problem is when he that eateth judges he that eateth not, and he that eateth not judges he that eateth. If a man is under budget and it works, hallelujah. Keep it up. But some people will never work under budget. Because budgets are limiting. They remind you that you're dealing with insufficient provision. <laughs> Yet, this man has told you that I'm able to do exceedingly, abundantly above that which you ask according to the working power that worketh in you. He says inside there, I have put things in you. You see, soon I'm going to teach a very, 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 very dangerous sum. Very, very dangerous. It's also going to be on the mind. But let me give you a clue. How far is the earth from heaven? Very far. But in Genesis, he said, these people being one mind, because they have one mind, he says, nothing that they think to do shall be restrained from them because they think it. That means there, is an, there was an ability in man 
to build a building that would go to heaven. I'll teach about it soon. Because some of you don't know how much is inside you. God has put so much in you. Why? Because he's in you now. He's not just a visitor. No, he's in you. Some people confuse encounters with visitations. No, listen. The new creation is not supposed to have visitations. The new creation is supposed to have encounters. Because God is indwelling. He doesn't leave us. Shout amen. amen. Shout glory to God. In Ephesians, the fourth chapter, 23rd verse, as I finish, in the Amplified Version, it says, Be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. Constantly. This is something you need to constantly do in your life. And put on, he says, the new nature, the regenerated self, created in God's image, Godlike in a true righteousness and holiness. He says, renew constantly your mind, the spirit of your mind, the spirit of your mind, the spirit of your mind. You must have a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. Every moment, refresh your brain, refresh your mind. Every moment, build a spiritual attitude of being like God in thought and in way. Let there be. And there was light. In fact, the literal Hebrew, the literal Hebrew is translated as light be. In, in, when you read from the literal Hebrew, he doesn't say let there be. He says light be. That means he commanded light in its own essence to, to, to define and be defined and appear because the mind that says be was the very thought that created that light. So in his mind, when he creates light, he just tells it be. In other words, manifest yourself as I've thought you. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. He's saying manifest yourself as I have thought you. When the church understands this, I know this is far for many people, but when, not if, because the church is coming for, <laughs> will eventually understand this. But when the church understands this, when the church understands this, and a man says, cancer sees, the man, the man you believe and follow told you that you can actually speak to a mountain. And you know, what frustrates me is when people zero the word mountain to flu. Is when they, they zero the word mountain to joblessness. Is when they zero the word mountain to the little small issue she has with her husband, he has with his wife. Because in their mind, what has frustrated them at that moment becomes a mountain. God was not talking about just figures only. Deeper than that, listen, we are reading scriptures of men who stopped the sun and they said, I'm killing people and, and it's the way of the sun to go down, but because I'm killing people and I need to kill all of them under the right light. And the sun waits for a man to kill all the enemies. The Bible says the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people avenged themselves upon their enemies. Don't limit God. Oh, but it's normal. The sun has to go down at the right time. You can't stop the sun. Listen, a man paused it. And the son said, I hear you, sir. Yet that man was not born again. That man was not of a new creation. That man did not have the mind of God. No. He just had experiences where the operation of the mind of God came upon him. Because he was not in the dispensation of the new birth. I'm telling you, we are going to enter places where men believe enough to tell a mountain, be removed from that place and be thrown into yonder place and it shall be so. 
Because God told us to move a mountain. You just need very, 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 very little faith. Small as a mustard seed. He said, you just need to, you don't need much. You just need this little to move a mountain. So I can imagine if a man had faith the size of a mango. Are you dreaming? Tell your neighbor, you believe in God. Or you're just playing church. Listen, some of us are ready to walk in air. We are ready. We are ready. We are ready. We're telling our minds every day we're ready to fly. You wake up in the morning and then you say, tomorrow I'm going to preach in China. Are you hearing me? Zoo, zoo. Because a man did it. The Bible says, Philip was found at Azotus. After dipping the Ethiopian eunuch and taking him up, right there, the man was saying, God bless you. Where did the guy go? And then he lands in Azotus. Wah! And he says, she, uh, the spirit of God. He doesn't even testify about it. Why? Because it is a way of life. Uh, uh, are you watching a movie or you're believing God? Those days are coming. Where men will say tomorrow, I have a service in Germany. And at 6 p.m., I'll be in France. At 7 p.m., I'll be in Nigeria. And at 9 p.m., I'll be on my dinner table. And he's not cult. He's a believer. Is it, is it impossible enough? Because if it is impossible enough, then we are talking about God. Then we are with God. He says, with God, all things are possible. Somebody shout hallelujah. Days are coming where people are going to command money into their accounts and say million dollars. B. Are you hearing me? That, that is why we're going to do different kinds of crusades. This, these crusades of 20, 40,000, we're skipping from them. No. Billion pe billions of people will be watching. That, that is what I see. It is possible. And we'll see hundreds and millions and millions and millions of people come into the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you're not ready to do it, wait for the next generation. But whether you want it or not, the word of God has gone out. Somebody is going to do it. It must accomplish in a certain person listening to me just make sure you're part of them because the word has come out and if I am true fear because the generation coming will not be subject to, to your internet whether your internet is on or off it, oh my goodness a man will speak to YouTube and tell it work whether internet is on or it's off because it's not by power not by might but by his spirit saith the Lord a man will command a woman's womb and tell it get pregnant and it will open <laughs> with God all things are possible but we are limiting ourselves into spaces and God is saying the problem is not even what you're thinking the problem is that you don't know how my word works your thoughts are so far from the way I have made the word to work your thoughts are so far from the way I have made the word to work. I have met people who have incurable diseases and I have told them you are healed. Without any formal prayer, I just said you are healed. And somebody goes back to the doctor and they don't find sickness in that body. Why? Because every day I'm renewing my mind, the spirit of my mind. I'm refreshing my attitude, I'm building a spiritual attitude. I'm aligning my mental faculties to, uh, to agree with divine judgment. And I'm seeing that every time my eyes open to that reality, everything is possible. Everything is possible. Everything is possible. Listen, I have done this journey for years and I might not be where I want to be yet. But I'm somewhere. Something is happening. You just need to study some of us. Something's happening. 
something is happening. And we're going to that every day. We're building it every day. I don't fall sick. I cannot fall sick. I can never be poor. I can never regress. I cannot go backward. My marriage will never fail. My children can never fail. I cannot die early. I'm, I'm building that mind because the mind that I'm connected to tells me to do so. It thinks those thoughts. It thinks thoughts of peace. It thinks to give me the expectation of my end. That is why many of you, your problem is not what God can do for you. Your problem is that your, your vision is so small. You can't imagine yourself sitting in a stadium. You can't imagine yourself ministering to a billion people, two billion people, three billion people. You cannot imagine yourself talking to kings and presidents, coming to your rising and being blessed. Gentiles coming to your light. You cannot imagine yourself rich. You cannot imagine yourself wise. You cannot imagine yourself sanctified and holy for God. You cannot imagine yourself free from sin. You, some of you, the habits that are refusing to leave you is because you cannot see that actually that sin can walk out of your life even this very second. This very second. You just had a guy giving testimony. As he continued listening, his body started agreeing with truth. I perhaps did not address the exact illness, but as I continued teaching, the man started to see the change in his body. Seizures leave. A, a man what? And God is just healing a person. Then you look back and realize, oh my God, the word is actually prospering in my life. Many of you should study your lives unless your heart is indifferent. But every man I know with a pure heart and has received from purity of spirit and this time judges, you will see the word of God is working in your lives in ways beyond you are able. But this is the challenge. You're only believing for what you have seen before. It's the only challenge. Now provoke yourself to believe beyond.